On October 17, 1966, the New York City Fire Department responded to a report of a fire at 7 East 22nd Street in Manhattan. The fire resulted in the deaths of 12 firefighters, the largest number in a single incident up to that time. The 12 men died as a result of a collapse of the first floor into an advanced cellar fire. This infamous event is simply known as the 23rd Street Fire. I often uh, wonder what if those orders were reversed? If Riley said 33, get in there and, uh, and 18 inch and go through exposure too. My name is Vincent Dunn. I was uh, in the New York City Fire Service for 42 years. I was in 33 engine the night of, of the 23rd Street collapse. We were first due on the second alarm. At the time, there was heavy fire coming out from underneath the stoop of this brownstone. And Rescue One was trying to advance a hose line down there, and they were not making any headway. Uh, Chief Goebbels told me to take my men and report around to Chief Riley on 23rd Street. He said, we think these buildings are connected. I reported to, to uh, Chief Riley. He said, stand fast, 33 engine. While we're there waiting for orders, a fire patrolman, an elderly fire patrolman comes out. And he reports to Riley. He says, Chief, we got smoke coming up around the baseboards in the back of the drugstore. So uh, Riley turns 18 engine and says, uh, Lieutenant, get a hose line in the drugstore. He tells me, 33 engine, you get a line into exposure too. So I remember looking in the drugstore. The light was lit. It was a very light wisp of smoke. And I knew there was heavy fire on 22nd Street. So I was eager to get closer to the fire. So, and I remember saying to one of the firefighters, there's no fire here. Let's get around to where the fire was. We went around, we stretched a two and a half inch line. Uh, I was working with Chief White, and he's telling us 33 and get this line up to the second floor. There's a bathroom window we can take out and hit the fire. And I remember looking out that window. We didn't open it yet. We're waiting for water. And I think I heard a whoosh. I think I saw a flash outside the window. You couldn't, it was not a clear window. And uh, then we got a call to get out of the building. And I'm reassigned around to 23rd Street. Now, I don't know anybody is missing, but I do remember being in that store with a hose line, smoke was there. And I do remember parts of that terraza floor in the exposed store dropping down like, you know, chunks of it going down like, a, like an earthquake. It reminded me of an earthquake. And you look down there and you see water is two feet below the floor. So it's eight feet of water. Uh, so I remember a couple of times this, there was no softness of the floor, but the terraza I guess all the beams were burned away, and the terrazzo was chunking off, like areas two or four feet in diameter were just falling down there. So we backed out, and a chief comes up to me and said, did, it, did anybody see Chief Riley? I said, yeah, I reported to him. He said, what time? I said, well, it must have been about 10 o'clock. And he just walked away. And it wasn't until, uh, you know, one or two o'clock we realized how many firefighters were missing. What happened was the man who owned the building on 22nd Street was an art dealer. He had drums of lacquer and thinner down the basement. Business was very good. So they knocked down the original bearing wall that was in the middle between the two buildings and they extended a new brick cinder block bearing wall 35 feet into the cellar of the building on 23rd Street. So now the fire occurred down there and uh, it destroyed the wooden beams of the building on 23rd Street. Now when Chief Riley and uh, Jack Finley and, and Joe Priori and 18 Engine and 7 Truck went in to check the smoke around the baseboard that the fire patrolman told them about, they actually went in past the new dividing cinder block wall and we're now standing on a terraza floor that was directly over the basement of the building on 22nd Street, and it suddenly collapsed. 
Terraza is polished marble chips set in, in the floor. So you had five inches of concrete, and what the five inches of concrete and terraza floor did, it concealed the weakness of the floor, and it insulated the heat of that fire. So they could not sense the heat of the fire through the five inches of concrete. They could not sense the weakness of the burned away wooden floor beams. And when I saw the terraza floor collapse, which is very unusual, it was a chunk of floor, it just goes into the basement crushed those drums of varnish and lacquer and created a flammable gas ball of fire that roared out through the Wonder Drugstore. Well, you know, first of all, you had so much water. You know, we had the super pump operating and we had even two and a half inch hose lines for, for hours. So those basements were filled with water. When you go through uh, one building, it's at least eight to 12 inches of brick. Then you gotta go through the foundation wall of the adjoining building, eight to 12 inches of brick. So, you know, they would uh, ho hoist up the jackhammer to try to take it off. You'd, you'd have to jackhammer your way through some bricks, and then they'd come in with the battering ram, and they would knock out, you know, try to expand the hole. And it was a labor intensive, long, period of time. And then, you know, I was not down there, but when they got through that opening, they had to go in and find those bodies, what was left of them. The most important lesson to a, to a firefighter and a fire officer is locate the fire. The other lesson you would have to say would be when you do uh, building inspection, one of the advantages is familiarization of the occupancies. You do see the insides of those buildings. Now, you may not have picked up that alteration, but knowing the construction of a building gives you a sense of, uh, of its danger even before a fire occurs.